Um, can everyone hear me? My name is Kimberly Chulis. I'm one of the founding partners of Core Analytics. Um, another founding partner is here in the third row with a video camera. His name is Aldo Dykers. We're a Chicago-based um, advanced analytics company. We specialize in web analytics. We do search, SEO, paid search, and social media advanced analytics. And we're the development hub of something called the Brand Meter Solution Suite. So these are the different modules of the brand meter. We have customer activation and loyalty metrics. We have competitive analysis, customer segmentation, social media data marts, and social media dashboard reports. The basic brand meter architecture is as follows. You can see the text mining, the semantic technology comes in the circle, um, the yellow circle section. But basically, I'm not sure how to get rid of that. So um, you have the raw comment data and you pull that out from whatever tool or source that you're pulling the raw comment data from and you put it through an API data integration process. It goes into the brand meter data warehouse and then it goes through a bunch of text mining where variables are derived, data is cleansed, a lot of manipulation happens. And then it goes into an analytic data mart. At that point it can go into segmentation and predictive modeling go into a customer specific social media data mart or also a competitor data mart and then there's brand meter dashboard reporting that feeds off of the brand meter data mart. In terms of raw comment data and sources for this, there's hundreds of them. Here's a list of some of them um, and there's um, a different discussion around the quality of the data and some best practices, probably getting uh, data from more than one source, deduping and doing some data cleansing there. In terms of um, you select your source, here we've um, taken an example from Viral Heat, and um, you do your query optimization within the dashboard of Viral Heat, you pull out your data, you do that through API methods, put it into a data mart, and then it's available for reporting. So in terms of sentiment, um, I'm sorry, semantic applications, the first step is text mining. You now have the raw comment data wherever you've gotten it from. And you run it through a series of um, coding, text mining coding. It's basically keyword extraction around product category, brand, demographics, lifestyle, preferences, mood, personality, motivation, experience, service, to name a few. So here's an example from the product category. There's some brand meters, we're calling them scan words, that's not really the name from. In terms of keyword extraction, if you want to find out a consumer, and I should probably point out that our initial uh, brand meter project is based on supermarket data. We have data from three specific Midwest supermarkets that are relatively similar in different characteristics. And we're taking a look at the differences in brand and how um, shoppers comment around the supermarket brand. Um, Typically, supermarkets are, are, are uh, broken down by department, so around food and household merchandise. So, it, for instance, with meat, if you're looking for a sample of scan words around meat, you might have pork, chicken, beef, steak, hot dog, lamb, and so forth. Or with produce, and the example that you'll see in a second is around corn, um, looking specifically. So this is just a very, very data-intensive text mining keyword extraction technique to start with around all of these different categories. So, um, so you do corn, and um, here's what you come up with. You actually get a whole bunch of comments which actually have the term corn in them, and you can see the three in yellow are the only true three that, that are um, actually around the vegetable corn. So if you want to identify, and then keep in mind that the end result is you want to understand which of your customers um, like corn. You want to market corn to them, or whatever other example you're going to do, whether it's coffee or tea or beer, you're searching for that keyword, so you can eventually put that into a consumer data mart that's aggregated over time, and you know in the future that you can market that product to them because they're a consumer of that product. So what we do is um, take a look at it, and it starts with a manual process, and then we put stock word lists in. So you're, in this instance, make sure that it's only four characters. It's not candy corn, it's not popcorn, it's not a corn dog, it's not corn syrup, and then score the rest of the database. and. The result of this is the misclassification reduction reduces 60, 60, 66% of the data, and through an iterative process, that efficiency improves. Same thing, um, demographic categories. You might be interested if your consumers have children, if they have pets, 
uh, what kind of car they have, if they're grandparents, if they're an organic shopper, a vegetarian, beer drinker, etc. Do the same thing. In this example, this is kids. So in every category, the misclassification is, um, is very different, and kids is actually much more accurate than certain types of produce. So maybe about 50% based on the keywords that we put in were, were classified correctly. And then there were stop word lists. If you say not all with kids, if you take out all instances of profanity, if you make sure that you're not saying my brother or my sister's kids or my grandkids, um, and then not my not wife and kids, different things like that, you can further reduce the misclassification, in this case, by 34%. So in terms of um, the next step, step two, you've got all this data, you've cleansed it, you've pretty much whittled down what you're looking for, and then you aggregate it up by the social media, media channel. So you can't really do it for an individual across all channels, but generally people have one ID, one Twitter ID, one Facebook ID, one YouTube ID, and over time it becomes a time series set of data and you can aggregate this up and collect a history of um, consumer consumer data, basically demographics and preference data, and then put that into a data mark. So here's what the brand meter data mark looks like. It's not a very complex view of a data mark, but each one of these different categories has its own table, with the match key being the social media channel and the social media ID. Okay, um, in terms of customer activation, we focus a lot on this because we're trying to figure out where the consumer is along the evolutionary curve of adoption, brand adoption. And then to take that one step further, we look at customer loyalty and we say, well, we've determined through predictive modeling that there are certain types of activations that lead to customer loyalty. Okay, so um, here's some activation measures. Some of it's just volume, it's profile, it's mood, personality type, um, understanding if there's the motives, information seekers, um, expressing an opinion. This is just a sample of um, Supermarket A. You can see that um, a lot of the comments are around Twitter and forum replies. There's not um, a lot of repeat comments in the other categories. Twitter, there's over um, two point something um, per month in this particular category of comments. Okay, um, in terms of this, this is just a quick prioritization street, um, sheet, but on the left-hand side, these are positive activations. On the other side, it's negative activation. And so discerning between the two and saying, okay, well, each one of them gets a score, one through five. How active is it, whether it's positive or negative? So if you join a Twitter or Facebook, if the brand has that, that's very high active activation, it gets a five. Um, if they just express an intent to shop or they, um, they are discussing choices, it's a very low level of activation leading to loyalty, so that gets a one. On the other side, you have, um, so if someone uses profanity or if there's a quality complaint or if there's maybe an accident at the store, this is very high activation level. And these strategies, the mitigation strategies, you know, indicate, address the issue and try to move it offline as soon as possible. Okay, um, taking that a step further, once you've put together the activations and you've done your predictive modeling to identify propensity for loyalty. Loyalty metrics, um, we have uh, probably about 60 loyalty metrics, we're just listing a few here, but it's around volume. If people make brand recommendations, obviously the higher frequency of purchases they make, if they're resistant to conversion efforts, and if they increase specific types of activation. In the supermarkets, um, what this shows in terms of the competitive analysis, the top graph shows there's really a lot of difference. Supermarket A has a high volume of comments in general around the brand. Um, supermarket B has about half of that, and Supermarket C has almost none of that. And in terms of the distribution, not only is it double in volume Supermarket A, but there's a lot more around Twitter, which is in the blue section of the pie. And, um, Although there's not a lot around supermarket C, most of it's happening in forums. 